Hello, everybody. Welcome to a huge house two lecture series. And today we have the pleasure to have with us Roger Tudor Gali from H Architects in English, although he will say it correctly later. Um, and first, in, after yesterday's fantastic lecture on, with Baukuns, with Adrian Bersuer, um, on how uh, he deals uh, with the, the ultimate uh, typology to test contemporary life, or so we argue. Uh, today, Roger Tudor Gali will show. Um, one of the projects that got them attention, uh, also in the in the side from the school that they were studying, pro probably a manifesto of their intentions, very clear on that sense, uh, in the more modern sense, no. Uh, but before um, starting with the lecture, uh, I would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Ura Nation where this uh, lecture series take place, no. Uh, we pay our respect to the knowledge embedded forever within the Aboriginal custodians of country. Uh, this land was never ceded and always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Uh, um, as we were mentioning, this is the second talk of the series, no? And, and today um, uh, we have the pleasure to have Roger uh, joining us, I think, from Sabadell, uh, but perhaps he's at the ATH. I'm, I'm not sure because uh, we were talking briefly before. H Architects is an architectural office founded in the 2000s and based in Sabadell near Barcelona. Uh, together with three other partners, David Lorente, Jose Ricard, um, Xavier Ross, they form H Architects, no? H Architects. Um, one of the offices that has um, been more influential in recent times, no? one of the offices that uh, speak to contemporary times architecturally. And I think that's very important. No? They, they deal with today questions through buildings. And I think uh, with no further ado, I'm gonna let uh, Roger explain their huge house. Thank you, Roger. Join us in welcoming Roger to Dogali. Thank you, Guillermo, for this presentation. Okay, um, this is about a huge house. It's a, it's a residence that we built quite a long time ago now. As Guillermo was saying, that that is a is, this building is placed in front of the, the school where we were um, learning architecture. We were studying there. We've been also teaching in the, in the school. Um, and for us was a, a big challenge a bit to, to be confronted to a kind of user. So that this building is basically only for uh, future architects, so it's a it's in a specific challenge for us. It was quite quite important to imagine that, and in the in the exact place when where we were learning architecture. So it was um, a very strong moment for us, and and it was a competition that has a very strange uh, condition. At least at the, at those times, maybe now is starting to be more usual. But it was a competition with the construction system uh, from the beginning. We, we, the the, <clears throat> the the competition was uh, introducing this condition of using a three dimensional uh, prefabricated concrete element like this. It's a kind of uh, industrialized system that they built in a factory, very fast, very clean, whatever. And, and the idea is that usually this kind of uh, volumes are full of connections completely. So this is the, the, basic, the basic modular element, but they completely deconstruct completely in each direction. And it every, obviously then is completely finished with plasters and any kind of materials, usually usually kind of uh, very <clears throat> light and dry construction systems. But we found a, a, an opportunity on this unit. Theoretically, it was not fitting with the program, but we, we found uh, a certain power on the, on the unit. And we start the project with this piece, a bit like uh, a big brick for us, like uh, uh, the, the, the small unit to build everything. 
instead of transforming the piece, we understood that that should be the original beginning of everything. And we, um, sorry. So that, that the system was completely designed to be finished in an indoor condition, and then you bring it, you move it to the plot and you peel it with a kind of a very fast system like this. And it was very, very industrialized. But our condition was um, trying to understand how we can transform something that could be a completely individual life in individual units to a kind of a more communal um, idea of flip, of um, sharing a kind of a period of your life that you are a student, maybe it's one year, two, three, five years at least, I don't know. It's a, maybe you start here and then you go to another apartment, but, but it, it was a very temporary way of living. We, we knew that from our period of students and we wanted to create something where the individual condition was not the main condition of the project. So the communal moment and how you share certain moment with the others, it was going to be the, the most important. So instead of doing one single building that all the other teams did it, so they did only one big building, like one, but with more storage, we decide to divide the building, mirroring the typology and creating something in between that, for, that was going to introduce the idea of community like introducing a um, <clears throat> thousand square meters of garden or a kind of a, you can say also a big living room because in Barcelona, the weather is so good that you can be outside mostly all the year. So a kind of a really big space, exterior, but com completely surrounded. So control it like a, like a real patio. And, and that was the gift of the proposal. So instead of something very individualistic with a kind of a corridor connecting everything like in a big hotel, we, we decide to divide, to extend the footprint, to be closer to the ground, to be closer to this garden. And that was peeling these pieces again, like, uh, like imagining big bricks something that was able to create space. So the, the unit, the three-dimensional unit was itself the individual space, but the, 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 the peeling system was creating walls that was uh, providing a bigger space. No? So the, the, the same piece was connecting to different scales, the indoor scale and the exterior ex scale. And, and, and then the, the idea was, this is going to be a common place for sharing. This is going to be also a kind of a microclimatic condition that is going to improve the thermal humidity conditions of, of the different units. So this is the final plan. You can see this kind of a very repetitive individual units. They are quite small, but they are very generous on the central garden. There is some kind of strategic stairs and laundries, sorry, on the, on the extreme. So these are the smallest infrastructures that they have, but the, this is dividing like three big patios in the middle full of vegetation with this very low section. So instead of a very a quite high building we produce something very low in this kind of a very suburbial um, neighborhood where the the quality was living next to close to the the ground close to the earth close to the garden and also the radicality is this mirror strategy so the type that you can consider a, a kind of a monastery type no so there is the units the individual units for the monks that are not monks they are crazy students but this this 
small control places for studying and living. They are combined with, uh, with the claustro, no? And, and this, this mirroring was another radical condition. Originally was very, some of the other teams were very critics when we won the competition because, you know, this, this facade is facing south and in Barcelona is the good facade. So you have the sun. So in winter is gonna be fantastic. So you have a, the big windows here, I don't know. And then the other one is completely inverted. So it seems that it's not following that, no? But this is exactly what is what was important for us. So making a kind of a, efficient and rational and functional organization it's not what we were looking for obviously there is also good windows here for catching the sun but we were looking for a more existential approach so what is the feeling that you are looking for you want to feel alone and you are living in this building and not in this building or you want to share everything so all the kitchens are next to the garden. So everybody is having the common life here. And then the, the more private thing is on the borders. Because the relation with, with the sun, with the views, whatever, it is important in a lot of buildings, but maybe in this building is more important. What are you going to, <clears throat> to share? What is the meaning of being student? What is the existential condition of sharing something? No? So this is the theoretical idea. So two walls made of super big pieces where you live inside or outside, no? And this is <clears throat> the beginning. So when the garden was still growing, but you can see all this idea of, a, uh, of an indoor facade, a kind of a repetition of units where we, we start also to introduce some kind of idea where thanks to this kind of uh, the construction of the facade where you can realize the, the, the supply systems, the, um, all, the, all, all the systems that usually are behind something or some, a board or something here, we, we start to, to show how the building was working in order to create a kind of a more fragmented order in a way that it was not so easy to recognize the different units. So creating a, something more homogenic where everything is, instead of understanding the unit, trying to produce something that it becomes bigger. No? So the big, the huge house in this house, in this case, it's, also in the composition of each element, trying to er erase a bit the joints between the units. No? And then the, the garden was starting to grow. Now it's more wild and the bioclimatic conditions are happening and you have kind of a macroclimatic places, natural ventilation. So this is a fresh condition in in summer, which is very important in Barcelona. And the three patios are creating usually a bit three kind of communities. <clears throat> Everything is low, close to the ground. People is mm, arriving from this kind of balcony. And then you go inside your unit. And, and now these are architectonical pictures, but this is usually, especially lunchtime, dinner time, full of people eating outside, like this a little bit, no? But more, maybe. And, and the limits are close. So it's not only two walls, it's close. So it's completely a patio or a claustro. <clears throat> And this is what I was talking about the facade, a kind of a naked um, facade that it's showing that it's um, like the body, the body, the inside of the building, 
So from outside, you will see it's more strong, it's more protected, it's, it's uh, completely steel, but inside it's made with this kind of uh, <clears throat> play wood uh, elements uh, showing all the systems. <clears throat> but at the same time, uh, with this um, kind of uh, comfortable materiality, that it's um, like creating the, 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 the indoor, the, the, the heart of the building. And when we come inside uh, the type, no? so we, we try to go inside these units. So how to live as a student inside these boxes, um, uh, we, we start to, to imagine how, what it makes sense, no? because finally, these are the people that are living here will be, everybody will be future and a future architect. They will, they will be probably more interested in how to use the space or how to divide it, how to, how to live inside a, a place that they are, they are starting to be experts. So we, we decide that it make, it was not really interesting to to follow what the competition was asking so dividing dividing the each unit in two rooms with a corridor a short corridor things like that so we imagine like following this topic of the factory of uh, warhol no so to, to give freedom instead of specification so create a, a very open system where the, the students can really experiment and improve and copy, which are the best solutions for the space, you know, because I think now it's like 10 generations or 15 generations. I don't know how many architects have been living there right now, but, but there is clearly a kind of a, an, an an opportunity of uh, an evolution, no? which is the best distribution for this unit. Probably the, the students of architecture with some mistakes, but with, with I don't know, 40 people trying every year, we'll find the best way, maybe better than us in one month that we have for the competition. No? So the decision was giving freedom, imagining a very informal ways of living, so this is just temporary living. So in the competition, we did something like that. We present that as a kind of a very open system where just with furniture, curtains, or whatever, you were able to create this freedom, making possible different organizations because depending on how much you pay, you can live alone or in couples or whatever. And that was bringing us to the idea of uh, emptiness and infrastructure, no? So something that you need just the maximum space completely um, with no significance, like nothing and an infrastructure to put, connect things or whatever, no? So this is the, the real version of that. It's a, 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 a three-dimensional, concrete element with all these kind of uh, structures, but you don't see because inside it's a flat surface of concrete, but on the ceiling, there is these beams and all these textures. Usually everything is designed to be finished, to be covered with uh, plaster boards. We, we keep it naked, except the kitchen, the minimum kitchen and the minimum bathroom. The rest was completely nothing, just the, the original piece. And obviously all the systems, they were starting to be very important. So the only expression of the building is basically the systems. So the supplies that you can see in the facade here, because you can also connect very easy when you are doing this peeling prefabricated system. And all the... <clears throat> all the electrical installations inside. This is the expression of the building. And it's like very 
like a very infrastructural thing, providing a void that then it's it's possible to be inhabit. No, so the radicality of the element that this is a very good one, but sometimes it's very raw because it's not designed to to be seen. The systems here and nothing else, and the, the life inside. No, that it's. Well, this is architects, no, making models and things like that. And these are two people living, and these are, I don't know, everybody's using, and this is the beginning, and the reality is that it's it's been really improving with the time, and there are some crazy things, sometimes not really interesting, maybe, but or in the limit of the the healthy quality sometimes because they are building kind of a very very indoor like boxing boxing box is something strange here but it's happening it's full of life it's it's a very realistic materiality so you can see here with the light and everything so the atmosphere is really powerful it's very warhol in this sense it's it's very raw there is also this kitchen there is an open kitchen with no doors it's really dirty because the students are not super clean usually so it's a very rarely it's it's full of life in a certain way <clears throat> and then there is this this moment also very important in this building that it's the the exterior protection from sun and from the rest of the the surroundings that it's this you know a vegetal facade so there is a kind of a second skin where these plants are growing there is like uh, 60 centimeters with this fence very cheap fence this is the individual window for a room and the plants but the leaves are following in winter are protecting in summer that was the beginning but now it's completely full protecting that the facade it's Again, it's not the soft timber of the inside. It's it's a steel, steel kind of a steel galvanized, galvanized facade, more more cold and protected. And and the fence is something with a tensile strategy. With it's only touching the floor where the plants are growing is producing a kind of a cantilever with the sun protection and also the future protection of the plants. You can see here, it's only the, this fan is only touching the ground where, where the plant is starting to grow. And of course, this is providing shadow. You can see here in, in summer, and then the leaves are falling in, and the sun is coming inside. <clears throat> and all this system, and also the kind of a indoor oasis that we have in the patio, is working with a, another important strategy for the building that it's the uh, kind of a resource, uh, resource strategy. So you know that in probably also in Australia, but uh, in Barcelona, it's not raining a lot. And when it's raining, maybe it's too much. So we create this strategy of um, producing our own um, context, a kind of a inhabited condition of nature by organizing a little bit this rhythm of the water. So there is uh, green roofs on the top very, very, because the, the building is so extend with a large footprint. So we have a lot of roof. Um, this green roof is not only a green roof, it has a kind of a indoor tank that it's keeping the big amount of water when it's too much. And then this water is, uh, the, so the strategy is to reduce the speed of this water instead of leaving the building in five minutes, we keep it for days on the roof and slowly is falling for this in this moment, a kind of uh, falling water that we create here. 
special piece where the slowly, because there is a kind of a detail on the, on the roof, making the tank, but at the same time reducing the speed, the, the water is following down and it's connecting with a kind of a draining gravel system that it's uh, watering the plants so the the plants start started to to grow with the time and some years and now it's something like this which is very beautiful and and I think it's uh, again producing the idea of a huge house because it's everything it's becoming one thing inside is the real life but also from outside it's a very expressive thing and that's all thank you Ria and beautiful explanation and, and yeah I, it's very nice to see how rough but how well it's being lived no and we have seen some of those images that perhaps not all of them and it's very nice for the students to see and as we mentioned today, we have the format of the long shot and Netini, one of the members of the huge house team, teaching team is gonna uh, take the, the long shot. Neti, whenever you want. Uh, sorry, I don't hear you. Huh? Neti, you are muted. Eh? Sorry about that. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Roya, um, for the amazing talk. So I'll open up with my um, first question. So I have two questions. Um, so my first question is regarding the permanence of the building. So um, the student residents for architecture students utilizing an industrial um, modular system, which gives the design a very transient, lightweight and efficient feeling. And the project is very engaged with the idea of circular economy to promote a sustainable way of living and building. Um, it's, and it's really fascinating that your other vernacular projects uses a lot of brick and masonry, and that seems to be a very predominant choice of material. And especially in CASA 1616, the cross-shaped brick pillars become the framework that hosts the daily activities in the house. And in this case of student housing, which is a highly transitional building type and the students come and go. Um, I'm wondering what's your view on the transient nature of the space and how long do you see this student housing will last for? Um, and then my second question is that the fact that the rooms of the student residence are like prefabricated containers and the framework that hosts 62 units of 40 square meter rooms in co enclosing the daily mass of the architecture students and the scale of the room is fascinating because it provides enormous um, possibilities for intimate private and sociable interactions within the space itself but yet it has a very direct relationship with the courtyard space which is the outdoor living room um, and in my view the project takes a very bold move to provide such freedom and flexibility to the student as possible, as much as possible, um, by provide by providing these sort of minimum, bare, like bare minimum facilities. Um, I'm curious of how you see the balance of this level of flexibility. Um, to what degree can it be controlled? Should it be controlled, or how does the space manifest itself in a state of post occupancy? So yeah, that's my question. So I'll, I'll meet myself for now. Very interesting and difficult questions. <laughs> um, no, and in, in the in the first question, this te temporality. In one hand, there is the um, another condition of of the competition is that this is this building is. Um, I don't know how you, you call it in. English, but the, the building it's not belonging to the university right now. So they did a contract with the company. So the company is the owner for 40 years. And when when this is finishing, they have the opportunity to extend the relation with the university or they bring the building to the university again. But But it's true that from the very beginning, the temporality of not only the student's life, also 
the building itself, it was there. So the construction system, the kind of contract between the, the company that it's um, leading this, this residence and the university was also temporary. So everything, it's a bit temporary in this. Also the plants, everything. So, so the vegetation, it's changing all the time. So the, the, the notion of uh, something that it's not going to last forever, maybe differently than some other of our buildings that we, we are usually looking more for this timeless condition. So this, this building, but not the only, there is also ICTA building or others that, that we've been dealing with a more fragile idea of, of what is architecture. Maybe naturally we are looking more for the timeless, but uh, in this case, uh, it, it was this more um, fragile condition. And, and I think you realize that in all the, in the nature of how it's built, how the facilities are showing the facade, how it's not very well protected sometimes, especially in the facade of the patio, you have this, this fragile feeling all the time, but I think it's part of the beauty of the building and also this evolution of the, of the plants, no? So the garden is in evolution, the facade is in evolution. And, and then the, um, the indoors uh, and, and, the, and the condition of the students, for us was completely clear because it's, it's a moment of your life that you are really prepared to overcome kind of a conventional limits of how to live. So you can be really punk. So it's, you can be completely, completely radical. And offering this opportunity is obviously introducing other disadvantages. So, so for, for the company that it's leading this building at the beginning, they were not happy with this idea because it's creating sometimes problems, how the people is using the space, how sometimes they are doing too many things and, and it, maybe it's, they can damage something of this fragile thing. And it, it's not easy, but, but on the other side, at the end, they accept that it was because th this company is doing a lot of uh, residential buildings and this is the most successful one that they have. So it's really working. It's always full. It's a, there is a big list of people that wants to go there. It's, it's always working and it's so, so at the beginning, we did kind of a deal with them asking them to try it because they, 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 they really don't believe on this idea of being so radical, but they have some economical troubles. So they were not, so they, they found the opportunity of, of, of the economy to, uh, to, to reduce some part of the budget. So we convinced them to try this more radical non-distributed space or nothing for economical reasons for them but they say okay we're gonna try but if it's not working then we we are all, we always have the opportunity to come back to something more standard or more conventional no dividing with rooms and all that and and the reality we've been lucky or not maybe it's not like it, it's been super successful Maybe with another kind of client, not not students of architecture, it was maybe going to be more difficult. But but the students of architecture, it's the reality is they are they need space. They need to to create a kind of a workshop inside the house to produce models. To so it's a bit this this workshop atmosphere. It's a bit necessary for this kind of users. So it's been successful. And now I don't know if with this I've been answering both. I, I'm not sure. 
you can if you want you can ask me again because now I, I really don't remember no, I think that. that was that was really good Roya I mean I would be so happy to be in that space if I'm a student like in architecture I can just do anything that's that's really good it's like a dream but I think on that one Roger like it's, it's clearly and I think it's nice like some of the questions that or the question was starting perhaps this is one of your more both fragile but more modern projects no together with the research center and I think uh, like it's almost like a parallel um, lineage of the office like uh, maybe this modern project going almost to pre-modern on some of your more archaic equally radical but this one's incredibly fragile no and I think um, and I think it's very important also for the students to see how that freedom of space or that uh, flexibility or that space is constructed and it's heavily constructed by that precise definition of that cell no that services that everything and I think um, all the students now that they are in the weeks of designing the huge house, I think it's very important not to see what how uh, each architects in this case they choose very clear for a, a position. No, like uh, the courtyard is going to be the protagonist, the mirror one that you said that was criticized after the competition. No, but you stick mm -hmm. to it, and, and that radicality is important on the plan and important on the project. And then you go with all the consequences. No, and I think how that that is that. That is that radicality needs to be built, and I think that's also very important in, in within this project. Yeah, and and um, when you are in front of the other proposals, so the other teams, I think it was five or I don't know. Um, I think it was very clear because this idea of of producing a kind of a very individualistic moment where you are in a corridor, then you go to your room and there is nothing in between. So you are in the street or in your house, there is no transition. This is very different. And, and this 1,000 1, square meters, that, so the exterior room, the patio, it's a lot of surface. It's completely extending the house a lot so so in a in a standard thing you you are just living in this uh, 30 square meters or 40 whatever no but here you have much more it's it's, it's a super it's a very very large extension of your possibilities yeah, and yeah. the weather is is making that possible so it's um curious question roya just wondering with the courtyard space, do the students actually come outside and make a mess? Or is that intended just to be clean? Because on your website, it sort of mentioned this idea of a living room. Do they do they actually camp out and, and also do? We, we were imagining a more crazy thing outside. Mm -hmm. So inside, they have more freedom outside. Uh, the, the company is introducing more strict rules but they are eating outside but but there is no really really appropriation so so they have they can they can be outside but they cannot fix things on outside no so okay so they you but on the other hand it is also been, do you think it would have been good to have been built or occupied or like planned and in a rougher manner that i think could have been also a test on how that living room could have been uh, appropriated, used by the students, live for one student to another one, and how the garden would have given continuity somehow to the to the big living room. That was the idea of the competition. Even in the facades, that there is this the, 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 like the double skin, the, the plants and the skin, there is like 60 centimeters. With a, with a kind of a metal grid that you can walk on. And that was also to produce a kind of a radical storage moment for models and bicycles and things like that. But that was not, that, that was not uh, I don't know, they, they didn't accept because it's it may be too radical. So they can only be radical inside. Inside they are really, really radical. And what is communal, it's more too much. But it's visible, so it's, it's funny, you know, like it's still this, whatever happens inside, it can be whatever, but they need to mm -hmm. keep the appearances somehow. 
Uh, I think right. I think um, on that one, have you seen just a, like a, have you seen the one the the Seidegger Keller one that is? I think it's also for the students of architecture, which I think is the one in Zurich. Have you seen that one? Mm -hmm. It's Seidegger. No. I, I will send it to you. That, that's a matter because okay. I think it's funny that um, one of the series of last year and it was also one of the most radicals in a much more room cluster is of rooms was also for students of architecture, no? like a, how they perhaps were ready to test contemporary life. Um, yeah, we, are the, we are the best ones on <laughs> finding- But it's also problematic that we- that uh, we, Alternative. At the same time, it's good that we, it's a laboratory in that sense of, of domesticity. No? And I think it's the perfect um, manifesto. That's what we were trying to argue. And I think we don't entertain you more. Uh, thanks, Neti, as well. Thanks, Adrian and the events team. And I think great thanks for the explanation for this uh, incredible uh, building for repeatability of contemporary Warholian contemporary life, no? And uh, the good life is uh, still possible, perhaps in some of these huge houses. Thank you very much, Roger. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank thanks you. everybody for joining. Um, keep in mind that uh, we are resting for this week and we will close the series with Kevin Carmody on uh, the Milan Giovenale um, on Monday, 15 May, the last week of teaching. Thanks very much to everybody for joining us this afternoon. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye.